Hey guys, Mike here. So we made it through another dreaded OPEX or quad witching, whatever you like to call it. So trillions of dollars in options now expired. And so uh, Monday and next week will be very interesting. We're going to you know, look at it because a lot of you are saying in the comments, I see it, emails, DMs, everything else. Like, man, are we, are we not getting overstretched? Like, this is kind of crazy, right? But, you know, remember, what's this move? Shorts getting smoked, right? So short covering, which means they have to buy back the stock to get out of the position, okay? Uh, basically, you got hedge funds trying to play catch up. They're real doing, doing reallocations and everything. And so that's what's happening, okay? And so, and we'll get into, I'll show you some things where you go, yeah, but I want, I want you to understand something. It's not just happening here, by the way, okay? So I'm gonna, it might surprise you. Uh, this is a worldwide phenomenon that's happening right now. Uh, I'm also going to something big, which is uh, Tom Lee's latest, I guess, his call. And I mean, it's a big one. It, it caught me off guard. I was like, oh my goodness. But I'm going to show you something. I want you to uh, really see something on this. We're going to pull back the curtain, look behind what he's talking about. But And I'm going to give you more of a realistic view of it. Okay, I think you might be a little surprised by that as well. And then we're going to do most of the charts Sunday, uh, but also, you know, <laughs> We're going to go into just a few here I want to address so you can, you can kind of see what's happening with those. We've talked about them before. But, you know, going into today, obviously, we ain't seen this in 20 years, like $5.4 trillion in options expiring. And so I always, I always kind of say this, this frees up the market, right, to start going uh, in whatever direction it's going to go. And, of course, have we had a big move? Absolutely. I mean, my goodness. I mean, Wednesday and Thursday were just insane moves. And a lot of that, again, is short covering stuff. But you can see, I mean, if you want to look at it from a different perspective, there's your buffed indicator. Is it overvalued? Absolutely, it's overvalued. But as you can see, it's not two standard deviations, so it can absolutely get a lot crazier, okay? And so, yes, we're overvalued in corp to the buffer standard. But, you know, and I guess it shouldn't surprise anybody, especially coming off this week. But, like, what do we just get through seeing here? We just got through seeing, like, look at this call volume right here. It's insane. I mean, look at that. And then look at the put volume. Yeah, a lot of people are bullish. Okay, a lot of people are bullish. What happened to the S&P? Look at that large percentage in a very short amount of time of stocks hitting new 52-week highs. That's what we've been complaining about forever, right? That goes back to 2021. So it's been a couple years, right? Breath just thrusting in. These are the equal weight ETFs I told you about. But remember, this is not an American phenomenon, folks. You had our uh, Dow hit all-time new highs. The German stock market, all-time new highs. France's stock market, all-time new highs. India's stock market, all-time new highs. So it's happening all over the place. And there, there are so many projections now because, look, if we're if our Fed presidents are penciling rate cuts, you don't think other, others are? Of course they are, right? And so there's, I forgot how many, I saw some chart today of some crazy amount of rate cuts around the world and everything. And this is where I showed you that chart where it was like global uh, liquidity cycles and things of that nature. I mean, because China, that is the second largest economy, they've already been doing it. I'll show you that today, as, as a matter of fact, that's something I'm going to cover. And they've been injecting, right? Just billions upon billions of dollars uh, already going in there. And so you can guarantee the European bank's going to be following, the United States going to be following. That don't mean they're cutting out of the goodness of their heart or anything like that. Let's just be very clear. I think I said that in yesterday's video because people tend to watch one video and then they'll go, oh, you didn't say this. But they literally just watch one video. They don't watch the videos every day. So um, make sure we're on the same page there. Now, Tom Lee, who obviously, you know, has had the hot hand in 2023. I mean, he's made a lot of good calls, whether you want to admit it or not. I'll, I'll say it for you. He has, right? And again, it was Mike Wilson in 2022. And in his, in his own words, he got leprosy in 2023. At least that's the way he feels like people have treated him because his calls went terribly, right? And then Tom Lee got past the hot potato. And so far, he's wearing it, right? And eventually... Tom Lee will get leprosy too, right? Maybe this will be a call that does it. But here is his call, and it, it's a big one. I think investors in the next 12 months are going to start to say, what things get fixed if the Fed just stops being so aggressive on rates, right? So if rates fall, and it makes a lot of sense that asset quality gets better if rates fall for the banks. Commercial real estate comes back. Uh, small caps, which are highly levered or higher levered, really benefits so to me this you know the next 12 months it seems like small caps can be up 50 percent you know russell just crossed the russell 2000 just crossed 2000 today so 50 maybe percent yeah so it could be russell 2000 hitting 3000 and so before we look at that chart guys please hit that like button for me really appreciate it, it helps people find the video and think about subscribing because my new goal go because my new goal going in 2024 is to hit a hundred thousand subscribers so i could use your help on that 
Appreciate all your support, guys. And now I understand that sounds crazy, right? Absolute craziness. But let's go a little more realistic approach on this. Because I don't think people, when you look behind the curtain, understand what's been going on with IWM versus everything else. What's the SPY? The NASDAQ? The Dow, what are they doing? The Dow's already set all-time new highs. The SPY and the NASDAQ are right there, right? And we know they're going to do it probably the next, I mean, it could be next week, early next week, end of year, a couple weeks, right? But it's, it's going to happen, okay? But then you look at IWM. Okay, talk about leprosy. That's what this thing has had for a while. It trades different than any other index out there. This is the rut, right? So U.S. Small Cap 2000 Index. It has been down 33% since 2022, right? Just trading in this range at the bottom. And this is what it likes to do. I'll show you. It likes to trade in this range, okay? That's a great swing trade, by the way. And when you look at this, let's draw it. We drew the fibs. Well, look at this. It hadn't even retraced. Well, when you look at this, it hadn't even retraced 50% from the drop yet. Remind you, look what all the other indexes are doing, right? So this thing still has to hit its July high at this point in time. Matter of fact, I don't even think it's hit its January high. So we still get the January high, then go back to 2022 and hit the July high, hit those levels. But again, if you can get to the 50% retracement or even the golden pocket, let's say the golden pocket, that's only 9%, right? So we're not even talking about it. And then 2,500 gets you back to where you were at. That's a 23% move, all right? So I'm just talking about that. I mean, and understand, I'm going to show you some examples of how long it normally takes for this thing to get back there. It doesn't trade like any other index, okay? This was 2020, and you can see it respects it respects the fibs, and look how long it took. I mean, this is, takes a long time to move up right here in 2020. I mean, it, it took a very long time. And these moves down, you see, these are big moves as it's moving up. These are 10 to 12% moves multiple times while it's moving up, Okay. You look over here, there is, I'm talking about trade in a range for a long period of time. Again, here's a drop, 2018 crash. It takes a long time, it respects those fibs, it comes up, it rejects off the 50, the golden pocket, the 0.7. It took almost a year to get back, right? There again is the range. So it'll move up and then it'll trade sideways, right? This wasn't even like a stock market crash here, okay? But the IWM crashed, it crashed over 20%. And you can see, it took 283 days to even get back up to the high. Right, and those are supposed to be the good years, by the way. Those were the Fed's holding rates low, buying mortgage-backed securities. Everything's great, the greatest bull market ever. And IWM, you know, it took a long time to get back up. But you can see how it's respecting its FIB levels, right? And you can see it ain't even right, even halfway up from where it's falling, while all the other indexes are going to the moon, right? And so it don't take a whole lot, and, and especially in these kind of stocks and these kind of uh, this kind of index to move it up. Right, because these are these are small caps, and so you get. And what does Wall Street love to do more than anything else? They love to rotate in something they they have beat down, right, and then start to push it back up so they can make money. All right, that's the name of the game here. It has nothing to do with whether these companies are great and all this good stuff. I've I've said in many videos, third of them they made a profit in five years. I think probably twenty five to thirty percent of them are zombie companies. Right, most likely that is the case, and they are extremely rate sensitive though. So what happens when, because if you pull up any index and pull up the 10-year yield, you'll see the IWM is way more sensitive to it than any of the rest of them because they live off debt. They cannot afford, they, they are taking on more debt, more debt just to stay in business. That's that's the way it is, okay? That's a zombie company for you. And again, when so not looking at that from a, a you know financial fundamental standpoint, it's just a little a technical thing that is happening the IWM and stuff. And so that's what he's saying. If they're not as hawkish and the rates keep the yields keep coming down and everything else, and they're able to borrow, actually borrow debt at a lower you know, rate and then refinance at a lower rate and all this stuff. That's that's what Wall Street's looking at on that. Okay. And I'm just saying, forget the number he's putting out there. Even if you get back to just the top where you fell, that, that's a nice move. That's a really good move, right? It's a really good move. If that were to happen, he's talking about way out there. If that happens, that's a lot of icing on the cake, right? Now, you know. Obviously, we saw some red today on some indexes, some stocks. Shocker there. They've been moving up like insanely, right? I just showed you stuff at the beginning of the video. But I also understand, I mean, what, what's happening? Why is this not a surprise if, you know, we trade down, we traded down today. If you see it going kind of sideways next week, I'm not saying it is, but, you know, because this market's hard to predict right now. But when you look, I mean, just look at some of these sectors. Small cap tech stocks, right? You're going to see a lot of them, they're running into resistance. They are overbought like crazy right now, Right. You go into real estate, you'll see the exact same thing. I mean, most of those stocks are at all-time new highs. I mean, look, look at these, these RSI is through the roof. Now, when you're on these rallies and short coverings, that can happen. They can stay overbought for a long time. And so when I'm saying breathers, I mean like 
maybe a three day breather or whatever, and it's up and down, up and down, chopping in the same range if that happens. But it shouldn't be a surprise. I mean, look at this stuff. SHB, that's howling too. Look at look at that RSI. Oh my goodness. You know, and this is a daily um, chart here and stuff. You know, look at IBB because biotech's been on fire. You know, it's running to a major resistance level right here. And so, again, seeing some red, it, it doesn't surprise me. I don't know why anybody else would be surprised either. And people are going to book profits because I showed you the call options, right? People are up huge. And so they're going to be selling those call options. If they're trading the shares, they're going to be selling the shares, the 3 x leverage ETFs, just booking some profits because you can't just keep going meteorically every single day. You have to have a breather here and there, right? And plus, you got the holidays coming up and stuff. So, again, that's why I just want to keep it in perspective. I mean, look at that RSI. Oh, my goodness. And that right there is cybersecurity, which has been absolutely on fire. That's a straight up. That's just going straight up. Parabolic, right? And so, you know, a couple of the only stocks I'll talk about. One, China came out with some news today, right? So for those who are in BABA, you know, I always take a lot of heat if I say anything negative about a stock or whatever. But understand, and I'm hoping because I did a member's video talking about my friend who has a lot of BABA in his portfolio here. You know, you see the green candles. I'm going to show you what they talked about and why this is green. But you see you're running into that trend line. You have to break above the trend line to go into what was a support area is now resistance, right? But you're seeing a bullish MACD cross. And of course, they came out again, which of course is the 13th time now, where they expand cash coffers with 13 consecutive loan injections. So they're going to start putting, what is it, $204 billion more dollars uh, via its medium term lending facility back in there. So it's QE, right? And so you would expect all the shiny stocks to be green because we've seen this every time they report that, the stocks go green. Can they actually have some continuation? That's a whole different story. Right. Because, again, they have a problem over there. They don't know how to fix it. I don't know how you fix a real estate market like that either. We're 70 percent of your wealth is tied up and it's just garbage. Right. And so, again, eventually what you have to have is money from here and around the world. Go there. Right. People are looking, going, well, that was kind of risky when I can go to America, India, any of these other ones. And it's not anywhere near as risky because their real estate markets ain't falling to crap. Right. And they didn't build ghost cities and stuff. And so. That's what you're looking at. Plus, maybe because they trust the other governments and so they don't mind investing in their stock markets because you don't know what China officials are going to do, right? Being a communist country that it is. But I did find the main problem with Bible. Like this, some of the members sent this to me uh, after I did a member's video talk about this. And I, I'd forgotten about this. Maybe you remember this. Let me know in the comments if you do. But it, it was the nail in the coffin. It was the nail in the coffin for Bob, and I guess we should have known it. I am pounding the table to buy Alibaba. 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 Plus.com at Chapel Trust. This is down with this ant thing. You know what? I think you got a winner there in Alibaba. And did you notice the date? 11 20, 2020. Right? So, was that three years ago? And so, ever since then, I've always said, man, there has to be an algo for him and Kathy Woods. When they're buying a stock, I've seen it too many times. I've even showed it to you where the stock would just start going down after they announced they bought it or something or recommended it. It's, it's nuts. And it would not surprise me if somebody did that. I mean, they do have inverse ETFs against them. But uh, anyway, I just found that funny. And that's what it's meant to do is make you laugh. But it's only know if you remember that. But that was the biggest problem by Bob, I guess. Now, when it comes to the couple of stocks we talked about, the high flyers here, you know, Shopify, we had talked about. I'm trying to put this in the other day, but I want to shorten that video down. And we talked about that trend line, which goes back to 2017. It finally did break above that. It's a little red today, coming back down, but we'll see if it can turn that into support because it's been waiting for quite a while to sit there and do this. And so it finally happened after it consolidated right here for the longest time, right? And so again, we'll see if it can turn that into support. You know, when you look down at the MACD, it, you know, it's trying to turn back up. You can see right there, the moving averages look good. The 50s crossing the 100, the 200s pushing up and everything. Still got those gaps below, but again, when they're gap ups, they don't have to feel as much as gap downs, right? So again, we pull it on that trend line. You can see what I'm talking about. And when you look at the volume profile, you can see it's in more of a volume gap right now just because of the way it moved up and the way it moved down uh, back in 2018 when it's, in 19 is when it started shooting up. I should say 2020, I guess. And then the way it crashed in 2022. And so not a lot of you know volume there to stop it. And so if this can get pushed up, Absolutely, you can go up to around like 83, 84 right there before you start hitting resistance. And so let's keep an eye on Shopify again, another high flyer. And then you got Roblox. Uh, what stopped it clearly was its all time high anchor VWAP right there. But this is another one where the 50s crossing the 100, the 200s trying to turn up, finally broke above that trend line, which it seems like it's taking forever 
uh, to do. And you can see the power of those volume gaps, right? This thing just shot right through that volume gap like a hot knife through butter. And once again, you know, there's that anchor V wop, and that's right now you can see it rejected multiple times off that. So that's going to be a son of a gun to probably get through. Might need a few on that one, and that's where it's coming from. The all-time high anchored V wop right there. But MACD is looking good. Momentum's behind it at this point in time. I would like to see it come back down. I always love when it comes back down and bounces off those trend lines that have been such a problem to break through. But if it can, you know, move past fifty dollars and thirty-seven cents, like. That thing is going to fly up to that gap right there, which the gap all told is like up to 65. So definitely, you know, watch for this one right here uh, to see if it can continue this momentum going in the rest of December and January. Again, it's another high flyer right there, but that's what's been moving a lot lately. And so again, once they break those trend lines, man, that's when the volume and everything starts moving in. Uh, but again, Robot just has to get above that all time high anchor VWAP. It was AMD. If you remember that one, that was having a lot of problems getting through it. And once it finally did, it exploded right so keep an eye on those right there and again tomorrow i have uh, the video answering your questions and then sunday is when we'll really dive into the charts and set some stuff up and i'll have the interview with uh jim carson for you and stuff and he has a lot of good tidbits uh to talk about and everything to set us up and see what he's looking at for not just next week around christmas but also going into january uh, as well so if you got anything out of it please hit that like and subscribe button hope you guys have a wonderful weekend appreciate all you guys who watch and i'll see you tomorrow.